How's it going guys? Winter Kills here and welcome back to a brand new post commentary duel video. I know it's been a little while since the last one. Um, yeah, quite a while, but uh, I actually got out to uh, a new local store uh, the other day to record with some friends. I was only able to get two matches recorded. This one ended up being a rematch um that i they the two players prefer that i put this one up first um the other game was kind of one-sided if you guys still want to see the uh the previous game of salmon grades versus orcus let me know and i'll be glad to uh get it uploaded and um edited for you guys and all that stuff um but yeah still working out a few uh kinks recording here i've, I've never recorded here before and just getting used to the lighting uh, the height of the table is adjusting the tripod and everything and the uh, the reason why everything looks a little crunched in and some things are cropped out is because uh, the camera leg or the, uh, the leg of the tripod actually got bumped a little bit mid recording and I, I didn't know about it until after I got back and checked the footage um, and I uh, had to skew the footage quite a bit and crop in on things so I do apologize if it looks a little weird um, yeah so uh, really not much else to say there. Um, so getting started with the light stage, which again, yeah, I know you guys can't see it, it is off the screen there to the top left. Um, the Corbane coming down and then normal summoning Neospace Connector, uh, trying to summon out the Aqua Dolphin, but of course it is met with an Effect Veiler, and he did have an Ash Blossom, Ash Blossom for his opponent the previous turn, which did slow down his turn just a little bit. Now trying to go into, of course, the classic Orcus combo, which does involve, you know, going into a Nightmare Monster. I'm sure you guys have seen it hundreds of times at this point. I'm sure everybody probably has. Uh, you know, can your deck make two monsters? Can your deck make a Nightmare Monster? Uh, I'll link two Nightmare. Then your deck can probably play the Orcus engine to some extent. Um, it is kind of getting old seeing. I understand that. That's why I didn't really want to record too much of this matchup. Um, but I haven't really gotten a full-on meta matchup on the channel for you guys. So I decided why not and, uh, you know, go ahead and go through with the recording of it so uh phantasmia is of course you saw came down a few moments ago on the summon of the cerberus might as well do that and i believe that also triggers the sunlight wolf as well so it's just a, a bonus there in of itself uh to you know add back a fire monster if any in his grave and then uh you know draw uh two and then recycle one back to the deck to put any back uh, any brick cards essentially uh then basically just classic orcus combo here happening on the other side uh, having that Mothman on field is actually pretty clutch since he does have that Shade Brigandine to be able to summon that out as level 4, possibly go into a rank 4, either Abyss Dweller, um, or the much more popular as of late Time Thief Redoer. I've, uh, seen this card being played in several Orcus decks, uh, you know, regardless of the variant. And there's the Shade Brigandine now, and summoning itself out to the field, and summoning now the, uh, Time Thief Redoer. And uh, using, I believe, Simple Skeleton there, and that does get met with the uh, Haunted Mansion, Ghost Bell and Haunted Mansion, I believe. Uh, so that will negate that effect of summoning out from Grave. I believe that's the hand trap that he pitched. Again, the graveyard is a bit cropped off, and I do apologize for that. Um, it's literally, I started recording, everything was all lined up, and then the, the camera light got bumped, um, and I didn't know about it till, till much later. Um, and I do apologize for that again. Um, still though, uh, being able to use World Wand to revive out that symbol skeleton, putting it back in his grave after linking with it and the Phantom Knight, uh, boots, going into Galatea, setting up his field spell with Galatea, and then last but not least, going into Dingirsu, and, uh, I believe going to use the effect here, uh, to attach, uh, a material instead of sending something, although he could very well send... The Phantasme, because um, that does not target. And I know uh, Phantasme does have built-in protection, uh, you know, for you know stopping a targeting a card effect that would target. So it looks like he's opting to attach and then just going to run over the Phantasme. So the damage has been dealt, and uh, one thing to, po to to take note of here, more importantly, is the simple fact is that he does not have any fog blades set, does not have any gear suit set up in grave, which is obviously usually the standard play. Uh, your standard line of defense with uh, Orcus is to sort of link away the Dingirsu after it uses its effect to attach the symbol skeleton from the banishment zone, or usually how I usually end up setting up the play. And then uh, linking away the Dingirsu, putting the symbol skeleton in the grave along with it, giving yourself the ability to summon 
uh, Dingirisu, uh, during your opponent's turn to not only send a card they control, but also destroy a card since you're summoning it to that zone that Bard each does point to. Um, so it's a double removal plus double negates uh, via your Fog Blades. Um, and then you also have a card like Time Thief Redoer in some cases, which can add four more interruption um, or just, you know, drawing a card, banishing itself to protect itself to put Orcus Monsters in Grave by detaching or just sending a card your opponent controls back to the top of their deck. You know, it really, uh, the sky's the limit when it comes to the type of boards that this deck can make right now. Seemingly a, one of the top contenders of this format. And I definitely think it will be a very well-represented deck going forward. Just simply the fact that any deck that plays Orcus will just obviously represent the Orcus deck. Um, whether you're playing whatever engines it is uh, that go along with it, you know, it's just still ending on pretty much the same board at the end of the day, give or take one or two choice cards, depending on said engine you play with it. So he did get started with the uh, circle and then into gazelle. And then I believe dumping the, uh, the foxy, um, not entirely sure there, but he did end up detaching for Dengirsu. So trying to protect um, a card or cards from being destroyed by card effects, because on top of all the other things Dengirsu does, he does have built in, uh, generic, you know, just general card destruction protection, uh, for pretty much anything on your side of the field. So if you're going to twin twist your back rows, you can detach just to stop that destruction. Um, Raigeki, just detach, Dark Hole, just attach, Slumber, just detach, and protect pretty much everything on your side of the field. A very, very strong card all around. Pretty much a perfect, uh, you know, piece to the puzzle for Orcus at the end of the day. Um, so... He will be going into Sunlight Wolf and spinning back the Dengirsu with uh, the effect of Mirage Stalio and uh, linking here into another copy of Sunlight Wolf and then using the uh, Jack Jaguar to recycle uh, the Sunlight Wolf back to the extra deck to summon it to the zone that the uh, Sunlight Wolf points to, adding back two cards there, a Fire Monster, then adding back a Sound and Great Spell or Trap. I believe adding back a copy of Roar or Rage, not entirely sure which one it was. Um, and I also did have to speed this video up quite a bit because it was an hour long uh, before I did any editing to it. So I did have to speed it up down to about a half hour so we wouldn't be here all night. Because um, I like to I like to let the videos go a little longer um, sometimes, but if, you know, commentating things and just, uh, you know, video length in general, I think an hour is just a bit too long. Uh, and then end phase here, you'll see him using uh, Symbol Skeleton, and it looks like Orcus Nightmare to a foolish uh, wand, and then obviously Symbol Skeleton uh, reviving the Galatea, and then using the Redoer here uh, to draw a card, and then banish itself to the next standby phase, I believe, and then using Galatea here also uh, to uh, set an Orcus Valor Trap. So grabbing that counter trap for next turn, to be able to uh, stop any possible interruptions, uh, you know, coming his way uh, via the Salomon Great Player. So pretty good idea there towards the end phase. And then looks like during the draw phase here, you're going to flip up Rage and targeting the Sunlight Wolf here. And we'll be able to pop two cards. Of course, the Redoer does come back. Uh, going to try and pop two cards here, though, off of the Salomon Great Rage. Since I believe that uh, Sunlight Wolf was summoned using its own name. Um, and, uh, so he's going to use, uh, Crescendo there to try and stop the Rage, and then Rage is stopped by Roar, another counter trap, so, uh, quite a few cards, uh, out of the way there for both the Orcus and Salomon Great player, mainly just one, uh, for the, uh, you know, the Salomon Great player, but pretty smart, uh, you know, to grab that counter trap, because not only did it clear the Rage, um, obviously by negating it, but also baited out the roar, and then you will have a twin twister here. Of course, that twin twister, um, is going to hit the field spell and the set circle, but it looks like he's going to just chain, uh, circle to target something that will make, to make it unaffected, uh, by, I believe, monster effects this turn. I think that is the clause that it gives, um... Not, unsure, not entirely sure at this exact moment of Salmon Great Circle's uh, tax. I know that the, fa the first effect is obviously to add a Salmon Great monster, but it does have another effect where you can target a Salmon Great Link monster and basically uh, give it immunity uh, to, I believe, card effects by monsters for a turn. Phantasme hitting the board now on the summon of that Galatea. Going to draw two and put back one. So just accumulating more resources here for himself on this uh, on his opponent's turn, which of course is very uh, a very good thing 
to have going for you. Um, but he does have quite a few banished monsters uh, as far as, you know, Orcus monsters that are banished. Does probably want to get those back into the deck uh, via using cards like Galatea. So that's the one nice thing about Orcus is the fact that pretty much all of your cards, no matter where they go, are recyclable. So even if your symbol skeleton gets called by it, um, or whatever, if something gets banished off an invocation or whatever, if it's something just gets banished, period, uh, pretty much any of your link monsters can uh, just put them back into the deck to be reused later. Um, which is, it's it's strange because it feels like the deck is, uh, isn't really in a bad spot no matter where, it may, where its main pieces lie. Um, if they're in the deck, you have cards that summon them out of the deck. You have a card like Galtea, which gets things out of the deck for you. You have, um, you know, cards that summon things out of the grave. Uh, things that summon things out of the banner zone. Things that recycle things from the banner zone back to the deck. Um, and you even have a card like Dingirsu, which potentially can get things back from your banner zone back to your graveyard. Um, so it's very, very, very versatile in how it deals with managing its resources so long as it's played, uh, you know, correctly to a certain extent. Um, you really aren't limited to where any of your main pieces lie. If they're in your grave, you can manipulate them to be either banished or back in the deck, you know, vice versa for every other situation. Um, it's just a pretty incredible archetype all around. Um, and looks like he's going to uh, summon out the Orcus Nightmare. Also, I believe Normal summoned the Harp Horror. And then going for Boral Sword here. Uh, looks like he's probably just trying to finish this game and that might uh, be exactly what he's going to do because he did take quite a bit of damage earlier on in the game from those three monsters that in gear the, Dingirsu, the uh, redoer and the bardish but yeah it looks like that's going to be it right there uh, boral sword signaling the end times are near uh, really in any given situation boral sword is a very menacing card salmon great circle uh, being played to get things started here for the Salmon Great player here in game two adding Spinny uh, of course from deck to hand and now trying to Ideally establish that very defensive board that we know that Salmon Great is very very capable of putting up Whether it be through traps or just sheer amounts of hand traps um, Is you know they're gonna be the determining factor here, so Going for sign at mining and discarding a card to add a copy of Gazelle. Now, if he has Spinny uh, and he ditched Spinny off of that, uh, this would actually trigger Gazelle uh, based on how the timing of it all works. So, not only does he get to search Gazelle uh, off the sign at mining, but you know, through using sign at mining, he will get the uh, Spinny engrave for free pretty much. Very, very powerful card for Salmon Great, as we know. And it looks like Ash Blossom is coming down to meet the uh, Gazelle. Luckily for him, he still has that Spinny Engrave because he did get to discard it for cost. Uh, so being able to go into Mirage Stalio, still one of the key cards for Salmon Greats going for Jack Jaguar. And uh, looks like he's probably going to waste no time here and go right into Sunlight Wolf um, to sort of get things going. And it looks like we'll see the Jack Jaguar coming back out, recycling the Mirage Dalio, and then triggering the effect of Sunlight Wolf to add back Gazelle, of course. Now, like I said earlier, what uh, Salmon Great makes up in Disruption from their traps, whether or not they're able to get them, especially when you see a card like Gazelle getting ashed and stopping you potentially from getting, uh, you know, that trap card that you send or that circle that you send back to set it to your field for, their, for your opponent to deal with next turn, um, it's usually met with hand traps because Salmon Great requires very, very few cards to get the combo going. So a lot of times you can just sort of, uh, you know, back up your hand of, let's say, Sign Up Mining and, uh, you know, Circle or Sign Up Mining and Spinny with cards like Phantasma, Ghost Spell, Ogre, Ash, you name it. Just plenty of cards to um, add to that stopping power that I feel like Salmon Great really can excel at. And it looks like Foolish Burial. Uh, being played uh, we did we do see a pancratops being summoned here as well uh, interesting enough so that is going to pose a bit of a threat for the remainder of this turn and uh, we'll see danger snack be uh, revealed discarding the twin twister so he will get to summon and draw 
Um, he didn't pick right, so he gave his opponent basically uh, a free monster and a draw. It's just the one thing I love about the danger engine is inherently when you go against it, if you have bad luck, whoops, you just gave your opponent a free monster and a draw. Not much you can do there. It's just sort of the nature of the game, I guess, at this point. And uh, rolling again, and uh, does get to summon the danger jackalope um, and draw a card as well. And it looks like Nessie was discarded off the jackalope reveal, so he will get to search a copy of Mothman. And uh, revealing Mothman now and being able to discard Orcus Nightmare from his hand and summon Mothman to draw a card. It looks like he goes right into terraforming uh, off that draw. So very, very productive dangers there. Um, snack, jackalope, and Mothman proving to be very, very useful here. And uh, his opponent, unfortunately, hit all the wrong cards. Um, and, you know, it's, it's, it's a double-edged sword because you hit the danger... Uh, you, you don't hit the danger, you give them the body, you give them the draw, but then you also put a card like Harp Horror Engrave or Orcus Nightmare. Um, you know, it's just, uh, it's a double-edged sword sometimes. It's really, really what it is, and it's, uh, <laughs> it's kind of annoying to deal with sometimes. Um, but it is what it is. Or even if you do, uh, hit the danger, uh, then they just get another danger to their hand. Or it doesn't matter because you hit Snack. Uh, or it doesn't matter because you hit Jackalope and they get a monster on board anyways. Uh, obviously, they lose out on the draw, so they lose out on the card advantage just a little bit, but it is still pretty devastating. And um, going into Break Sword here, and it looks like he's just going into Battle Phase uh, right away, not wasting any time, wanting to clear that uh, Sunlight Wolf off of the field. Um, I think he may have used Baylinx earlier uh, to protect it from taking too much damage. Um, either way, uh, still putting on some damage here and trying to clear that back row or bait it out, whatever it may be. And uh, it is a Salmon Great Circle, as I do think he did add that back earlier off of Sunlight Wolf um, very, very easily to do so. And uh, destroying Mothman for his Breaksword. And of course, that it will trigger uh, his opponent to chain that uh, you know circle in response, not wanting to miss out on a search, of course. And uh, definitely not uh, really caring to sacrifice the Mothman there. The Mothman has done its work giving him the, uh, I believe, the terraforming for the orchestrated babble, and uh, still has a harp horror engraved alongside a Orcus Nightmare. And uh, I believe Lancia may have been played also, um, so that's why we're seeing no Orcus plays happening, uh, so I want to make that clear. I think he did side Lancia, and both players did side uh, for this game, and uh, Lancia, I think, was played. Might have just seen it in his graveyard there. And uh, now we're seeing the Gazelle play come down. And it looks like he is using Harpoor now during his opponent's turn because he does have the field spell up. Going for Symbol Skeleton. Wanting that card out of the deck because I believe in most Orcus players' opinion, that's a card you really don't want to draw for the most part. Um, I know some builds play two. Some builds only playing one at the current time. Just because that's the card you want to like summon off of your Harpoor after you sent, you know, sent your Harpoor to the grave with your Nightmare, sort of that chain uh, of cards being played. And now it looks like he's using Orcus Nightmare, perhaps targeting his Pankratops. Uh, it's possibly boosted up by quite a few points here if he does decide to send the World One. But it looks like he's sending another copy of Harpoor to boost something up by 400 points. And uh, that's definitely not bad. 400 uh, points of uh, attack boost. Definitely better than a sharp stick in that. Yeah, there's that Lancia engraved, so can confirm that he did Lancia, obviously. And then we'll see the Foxy taking out the field spell. One of my dreaded enemies. Uh, I remember the one tournament I went to playing uh, Orcus against Salmon Great before Dane came out. Um, I think it was just after Savage Strike. And my biggest enemy playing against this deck was always the Foxy kept picking off the field spell. And it was just very, very, very annoying to keep dealing with. Um... Jack Jaguar getting back the Gazelle from Grave. Uh, and, of course, recycling a card at the same time. Now, trying to see uh, what he can do here. Uh, that Lancia did slow his opponent down quite a bit. Still has to worry about that Pankratops, though. Uh, which could prove to be a problem at any given moment. And going to use Roar on the summon of the, uh, the Salmon Great uh, Sunlight Wolf. And then using Sunlight Wolf's other effect to add back Rage. And now we're seeing Spinny come out and go into Mirage Stalio. So the the summons, they just keep on happening. And uh, going for Falco. Now going for the Heat Leo. And uh, setting back 
uh, a copy of the uh, Sound of Grace Circle, playing the Field Spell now, linking into another copy of uh, Sound of Great Heat Leo to use its other effect to be able to target a monster on his opponent's side of the field and basically make its attack equal to the attack of one of the monsters in Grave. Quickly chaining now that Pankratops before things get too risky and uh, popping one of the back row, I believe it was the Roar, so that will get banished because it was set uh, by that effect of uh, its own effect written on the trap card. I believe anytime a Sound Great monster is linked summoned using uh, its own name as material while it's in the grave, uh, you can set it back. Um, and that will prove just to be too much uh, for his opponent to try to go into next turn. Uh, already having a pretty established board and being pretty low on life points. Now this one got started a bit late. Um, they were a little bit anxious trying to get into their third game and I um, wasn't aware that they were starting. Uh, luckily we didn't miss too much Foolish Burial for Orcus Nightmare and uh, I believe just dumping a uh, Harp Warrior to the Grave off of a Danger and setting up a standard uh, Orcus play going into Cerberus then following suit into Nightmare Mermaid and um, now using Harp Horror and it's met with the Ash Blossom but his opponent is quick to respond immediately with a call by the Grave not wasting any time just going for it no questions asked definitely want that Harp Horror to go through to summon that Symbol Skeleton a crucial part in the combo and uh, now Galatea is on the field and uh, proving to be the start of what will most likely be a standard Orcus combo. Again, I, I like I, I play, again, play against it on stream all the time and uh, I think for the couple hours that I was here the other day, um, I think I only played against Orcus the entire time, uh, probably give or take one match. Um, and it's just, it's mind numbing to watch the same combo over and over and over and over and over again. Um, but it is what it is. It's just, I feel like every now and then in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh, we have a deck that sort of comes along that becomes the best deck, and it just has that same long drawn out combo, um, that all of us dread at the end of the day, but you know, not much you can really do other than just sit back, play your hand traps, or if you don't have any hand traps, just sit back and think. That's really all you can do is just use that time your opponent's comboing just to think, relax, um, or get tilted, I guess if it's the, you know, 100th combo you've seen that day of the same Orcus combo, maybe you're going a little insane, not entirely sure, um, but yeah, just relax, think, see if you can actually have any chance of disassembling that board, uh, come time for you to draw for turn, and try to, uh, make a play yourself while your opponent plays Solitaire, so, uh, now going into Dingirsu here, going to attach the symbol Skeleton, now using Boots Engraved to go ahead and grab another copy of Fog Blade. So not forgetting this time around here in Game 3 to go grab his uh, arguably the most powerful components of the Orcus, uh, you know, going for his board, which is the back row. Um, not only is it setting up a card like Dingirsu Engrave, um, or perhaps just leaving Dingirsu on board to protect your back row from destruction, or to protect any card in general from destruction. Um, so yeah. Four sat back row, Dingirsu and Bardish on field. Uh, a very, very solid ending board. And uh, we're starting off our turn on the Salmon Great side of things with Synet Mining, grabbing Gazelle, and then going right into Pot of Desires. Make sure he wants to uh, not only deck thin uh, before he draws, but also make sure the uh, chance of him banishing all of his Gazelles is completely reduced to zero um, by, of course, grabbing that one off of the Synet Mining. Very, very cool to see Synet Mining in action here, though, uh, for Salmon Greats. Definitely a very, very strong card. Foxy coming down and linking away into Bay Lynx, going for the Gazelle Trigger, and, of course, grabbing the Field Spell. Um, and, uh, yeah, grabbing the Field Spell here. Now, uh, I think he's going to use the effect of uh, Gazelle to send. Of course, the effects of Bay Lynx, uh, Resolve... Um, I think it goes like Bailing 1, Gazelle 2, and then he goes to activate Gazelle here to send, and it looks like it's being met with a Fog Blade. So, of course, no cards being sent to the graveyard. He does know that he does have to play into some back row, obviously. That's the one advantage about playing against a deck like this. At least you know what back row are set. Um, at least you know, in most cases, where the back row is set also to begin with. Um, especially cards for the Fog Blade. That first Fog Blade, you know where it's set. Same thing with Crescendo. You know where it is set. 
Uh, so it does give you a bit of advantage going into that field uh, as opposed to just being blind, you know, guessing which card is which. And uh, that Foxy returning with a Vengeance to clear that uh, Fog Blade. And now going into a Mirage Dalio, summoning out a, the uh, Spinny, which I believe he has not used uh, this turn. And now we're seeing a copy of Will of the Salomon Great. And, uh, or perhaps not deciding here uh, what he wants to do. He still has to play through quite a few cards on his opponent's side of the field. Just thinking if there's sort of any other way uh, to bait things out before he put, goes into sort of that pseudo soul charge slash monster reborn. Um, and looks like he wants to link. Not sure which cards to use at this given point. Will it be the Mirage Stalio and the Bay Lynx? Looks like it will be. Going in for Sunlight Wolf. Now having the opportunity to spin back that Dingirsu. Which is nice because now that he's spun the Dingirsu, he does not have to worry about it uh, coming back from the grave this turn. You know, you know, spelling a double pop. Losing two cards essentially off one symbol skeleton is something he definitely not doesn't want to deal with this turn. So I'm using Mirage Stalio very well there to put that back into the extra deck. Um, to make sure that isn't a problem later on because of course if he does deal with it by you know running it over It just will pose to be a massive problem later on especially if his opponent does have the field spell um, Now going into heat Leo Trying to spin that back row And it looks like it will go through and if it was crescendo, it's useless now because there's no uh, Salm or uh, Orcus link monster on his field or if it was another fog blade uh, Not entirely sure we least know for a fact that he at least did have a possibly a double fog blade uh, off of the Bardiche. Obviously, there is a Boots banished, um, so we would assume there would be at least two fog blades down on his opponent's side of the field. Obviously, we know one has been exhausted at this point. Now going for Sanctuary and going for a second copy of Heat Leo and using its effect again to spin back another back row. Very, very nice card there. Just being able to remove tons of back row. Um, just uh, by getting that card out on the field. Now we're going to see Will of the Salmon Great. Uh, now that he does have a Link 3 uh, on his field, he can bring back uh, lots of cards, but looks like just opting to go for another copy of Heat Leo. And uh, swinging in for as much damage as he can uh, with both Heat Leos. And it looks like uh, possibly Main Phase 2 using that fog blade to bring back Bardiche uh, to give himself an arrow to go into next turn and if he does summon Ningirsu he does have the arrow set up that he needs to be able to uh, clear two cards so um, which is a pretty good thing to have going forward uh, the only thing our Orcus player has to worry about at this point is a potential barrage of hand traps uh, potentially Gazelle as well coming down to trigger uh, you know gaining some advantage during his turn while he tries to combo symbol skeleton being activated going for uh, the Galatea here and looks like he will set crescendo uh, from his deck so it looks like he did not have crescendo set last turn um, and obviously you really wouldn't want to I guess uh, turn one you really in most cases want to grab the field spell because it does allow you to play during your opponent's turn uh, unless of course you're very very confident uh, and maybe your Dingirsu play isn't going to work out too much uh, like you might think it would in some cases. You know, going for the counter trap can be better, but in most cases, me me personally, at least a few of the people that I've talked to, going for the field spell is always just a little bit better because it does allow you to, uh, you know, use and resolve things during your opponent's turn. Whether it be Galatea, whether it be, uh, you know, using your Orcus Monsters in Grave, and uh, yeah. So quite a few things to uh, take note from that. That field spell being very, 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 very important. And uh, Harp Horror summoning out Orcus Nightmare. And then, uh, just of course, basic Zodiac effect here. Just going into Dengirsu on top of Galatea. And it looks like both effects are being activated here. Bailings uh, being banished from Grave to protect one card from the Bardiche. And uh, still has the effect to send... Um, off of the Ningirsu, which I don't think he used. Yeah, he did opt to attach um, instead, which I guess is kind of smart since he doesn't really need to use that effect since he can just run over uh, the rest of his monsters. Uh, with the Ningirsu, instead of using that effect to send something, he does get that added effect 
the added bonus essentially of getting the uh, Dengirisu engrave here with the symbol skeleton. Now terraforming being played uh, to grab a uh, pops, perhaps another copy of the field spell. I don't think he'd want to be going for light stage this late in the game, especially since there are no back row to uh, try and lock down. Um, graveyard right there. Not looking too great. Double heat Leo, and I think both Bay Links are now gone. And it looks like during the draw phase here, we will see Dengirsu uh, come down, and it looks like Bardish will be using its effect uh, to destroy the Will of the Salmon Great, and obviously not wanting to send anything with Dengirsu since there are no other targets after that. Uh, Bardish effect resolves. He will just attach the, uh, the, the symbol skeleton, uh, giving it a material, which is pretty important because it allows his Dengirsu to be able to protect from Foxy coming out of the grave, uh, which eventually would have spelled losing one of his back row, uh, which allows him to keep a crescendo, which is very, very key here. Ash Blossom on top of that coming down for the Gazelle. Really just not a whole lot you can do at this point, but it looks like he does have a Salmon Great Circle really going back and forth at this point. I think uh, one of those games that could potentially be in either player's hands uh, given, you know, one or two cards, you know, and it could be any unexpected card at this given point. I wasn't really expecting the Ash Blossom to come down for the Gazelle, especially when you already have to worry about a card like uh, Crescendo being set, uh, and that it, that it is live, <laughs> also, because he does have a Galatea, which is just, uh, something to keep in the back of your head, especially when you're like, I know when I play against Orcus all the time, it's just like, I know they have all these interruptions, it's just like, how can I play around them? Can I play around them? How many resources will I have left at the end of the day, um, you know, at the end of the play, I guess, is what I should be saying, um, so yeah, did lose out on the Gazelle Send, but luckily he did have Circle to sort of, uh, you know, lessen the damages, if you will, and then we'll see Spinny trying to come out, and then activating the copy of Sunlight Wolf, at least attempting to, and it will be met with the Crescendo. Uh, which looks like will be the final nail in the coffin. Also still had another copy of Fogblade set. That was his opening hand, I believe. Uh, not the greatest, but uh, at least tried to make it work. And uh, very, very close, I, th I think. Very, very close to trying to get that game won. Um, it's just unfortunate that the uh, Dengirsu was able to come back. I mean, it's not really that hard to make it come back in the first place because you just need one Orcus Link monster, which is very, very easy to do. Um, it's just very, very easy, especially with Symbol Skeleton. Uh, you know, being in the game, uh, it's just hard, hard, hard board to break at that point when all the pieces are set and everything is just waiting there to stop any try and any play you try and make, especially when you add in a hand trap on top of that, like that Ash Blossom, um, which potentially I think was what pushed it over the edge. If he didn't have the Ash, uh, he might have been forced to use the Crescendo of the Fog Blade on the Gazelle, and then he has to worry about stopping the, uh, you know, the. Uh, the circle, which leaves him with potentially no back or left, trying to at least make some sort of play happen, leading to a potential comeback, but who knows. Uh, like I said, I have another game. Uh, it's a very one-sided game, but it's still a, uh, a match of Orcas vs. Salmon Great. If you guys want to see that, same players. Um, uh, if you guys want to see that uh, video, let me know. I'll edit it, get it uploaded to you guys as soon as possible. And uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, don't forget to check out Imperium Duelist uh, as well, down in the description below. And uh, yeah, as always, guys, we're going to kill Santa. We'll see you guys in the next one.